I think that, you know, I realized I'm just turned 50 this year and um, that I, I, it reminded me of my days in school, in high school and college, where I used to wait till the last minute. I was an art major, so I had all these projects and I put like three overnighters in a row, you know, because uh, I didn't, I, in my thoughts, I had things that I wanted to talk about based on the topics I talk, uh, I discussed with Dina, but then last night I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I have this brain dump, and that's usually, for me, being self-aware, I understand that I'm, that, at this point in my, in my age, I'm not going to change, so that's how I am, and I'm going to, and, you know, so hopefully, my goal today is that you come out of this with some nuggets of things you can use or apply, and so hopefully you're inspired, so, you know. Some of this stuff you're gonna hear is not something I came up with. I'm just gonna speak from my experience and there's stuff here that is true, tri tried and true in, in the world out there. Um, you know, so um, what I'm gonna do is, um, I am gonna focus, the topic is uh, imagination in, liter in leadership and, 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 and how to apply that. And I, I'm gonna make a case like a lawyer does of why it's an essential element and if you don't have it, then I don't think I could call you a leader. That's another argument we can have in another kind of debate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with some quotes. I like to start kind of things going with some wise people that have said these tried and true quotes. Yeah, I'm laughing at my own jokes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? uh, an idea is like a virus, resilient, highly contagious. And even the smallest seed of an idea can grow. It can grow to define or destroy it. What movie is that from? Mm. Inception. Oh, uh, Cobb. Uh, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. Inception. Yep. Inception. He also said, a single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can also transform the world and rewrite all the rules. So that's really profound, right? Um, I'm gonna shift a few quotes to the no on imagination. Uh, imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress and giving birth to evolution. And that's uh, Albert Einstein said that. Uh, a few more quotes. Laughter is timeless. Imagination has no age. Dreams are forever. Walt well, Disney. I worked with this pony at a Disney store about over 10 years ago. Oh. 10? Is it over 10? It's more than 10 years. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. That's right, it was like 15 years ago, right? When there was one in Dover Mall, there used to be a Disney store. Oh, yeah. He was my boss, so I was my man manager there. So. Uh, another Walt Disney quote. Every child is born blessed with a vivid imagination. And this is a big one, because we're all obviously adults, and we like to think we are. I like my my wife says, says, I have three dollars, she's like, I have four kids. <laughs> but just as muscle grows flabby with disuse, so the bright imagination of a child pales in the later years if he or she ceases to exercise it. It's like a muscle, right? You have, it's a, you have to exercise the imagination. So what I'm going to do is dive deep into explain to you the difference between creativity and imagination, because there is a difference. A lot of, a lot of, uh, Dictionaries like to kind of combine them, and I, I disagree. Webster doesn't know everything. <laughs> uh, and this is my last one, which is a very wise, wise person. Well, I don't know if he's a person, but uh, with imagination, I can be anything I want. SpongeBob, I swear. <laughs> so, all right. So, the, so this sets a tone. I wanted to set a baseline here of what we're going to kind of discuss today. Um, so, let's see here. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna to touch is the imagination in leadership. So, a uh, little bit quick, 20 seconds about myself. Uh, I, I, I own High Ground Creative. I've had this company for about a year. Physically, in my heart and in, on paper, it's been planned for a long time. The, the, everything kind of aligned, I didn't quit. I, I had my focus, the opportunity came about. Uh, and, and, and I seized it, and now we're here. So we have a, uh, right now, a, a really, really sharp team. Um, I thank you for the comment about Javier at Creative, but we have a great team, Abby and Kylie here, who I could not do what I do without them. <laughs> very talented graphic designers, marketing 
uh, folks, and uh, we, we, we do a lot, everything we do, we touch, all three of us, we, we, you know. Uh, the team's growing, we have more people coming on board, and I love to be part of the chamber. Every time, and Judy can attest to this, I've been in many lives and different jobs. I always, when I change a job, I, first thing I do is let me talk to Judy. And, but then I always had a boss who didn't, didn't, wasn't interested in me participating in chamber things. So now that I have my business, I, I immediately dove in and connected with Dina, and so here we are. So thank you for having me. Um, so uh, imagination is important in life, period. Uh, it is also crucial in effective leadership. And I'm gonna connect those dots because I know the theme and everything you've been doing has to do with leadership and what leadership means, it, 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 there's a lot of different definitions. But I think we can agree that leadership is something that is not given, you have to earn that. You know, yeah, you can be a boss or you can be a coach or a manager, that's a, that's a title. A leader is a different. You can be a subordinate in an organization and not be the head, but you can still be a leader, right? And you guys have probably heard this, but I'm just, it's good to kind of sometimes hear it and, and I, I always find, you know, try to find my space where I can lead and do things and, and, and speak what I need to, you know, to, to kind of contribute to improve what, but it's an action word. There, there, you can't lead by sitting and directing. We have to set the example. And then when you create that example, people follow and they, they kind of gravitate to you. Um, leaders with strong imaginations are equipped to deal with unexpected, and steer their organizations down the right path. Uh, if a leader can engage and connect with their team, the team is much more likely to buy into the vision of their leader. And it, 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 and it doesn't matter how wacky their ideas are, no matter how far-fetched their goals are, if the team is emotionally on board, they will suspend their disbelief and accept the leader's imaginary tale as their own. And that's, so, you know, there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, and, it's a tried and true thing, so it's not, you know, I'm gonna say this a few times, and this is further on, but I'm, it just came to my mind, so I wanted to share this, but the key part of here is, is being genuine. You can't fake this. Oh, I'm gonna be a leader today. <laughs> then you're not. <laughs> Am I a leader? You're not. <laughs> you have to ask the question, you're not. So, um, you know, so, but, being true, and the new term instead of genuine now is be real. You gotta be real, you gotta be who you are. And I always say, for me, my mom raised this value in me. She said, you know, she, she, we're I'm from Puerto Rico, and she, I'm not gonna say it in Spanish, but she used to say this to me in Spanish. She goes, Javi, you know, the uh, Bible says you're supposed to be the salt of the earth, but you, Puerto Rican, you're, gotta, you're spicy. <laughs> adobo, you know the adobo stuff? Yeah, yeah. You, you, that, you, you can conquer the world if you're, if, if, you know, no, people don't like bland people and lukewarm and just gray, right? And um, you don't, you know, I, I had a conversation with, the late, with, the, with my team earlier and we talked about being an extrovert, whether that could be a value or a trait of that. And no, because what is an extrovert? That if, if, we, if we jump into that limiting belief that, oh, I'm an ext I'm introvert, then you can lead and your personality traits not lend themselves to be this outspoken person. Against leadership, it's subtle and it's true. So my mom used to always instill in me, like, you know, let people feel the weight of who you are and let them deal with it. Ooh, that's really sharp. <laughs> right? I like it. She said it in Spanish, but it's not being, and, and it's not being pompous or being, or being like, oh, I'm all that. No, it's being confident in your shoes and knowing being self-aware. That's leadership. So uh, the primary power of any visionary leader doesn't therefore lie purely in their story. It lies in their willingness of the willingness of their people uh, to accept their story as their own, your story as their own. That's how you lead. You know, a leader is not a person that has power to fire you. It's a boss. Um, so um, I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit and set another little underlining layer of, 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 of uh, baseline. Um, and this is something actually that came to me last night. Um, so stay with me, I promise, I'm gonna land the plane. My wife always says to me, he's like, Javi, you're circling too much, it's time to land it, it's time to land it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. And Abby and Kylie know me, they know, like, okay, I'm gonna get to the punchline. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, 
I'm going, I'm going to add to this paradigm of story. And I, I believe I'm a, uh, that leaders are storytellers. And in modern marketing, I'm a marketing person, it's, it's telling a story. People like to follow stories. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge this thought process in you to really kind of adjust your, your mindset here. And I think if I do this correctly, like, a, like an attorney would, I think you're gonna buy into this. Life is like a story. Life doesn't happen to us like a math problem. It comes to us in a way of, like a story does, scene by scene. So you wake up in the morning, what happens next? We don't get to know. We, get, we have to step into it, right, and, and, and act, right? You have to enter into the journey as it comes, right? Um, the sun might be shining, it might be raining outside, maybe there's a tornado, right? We don't know, right? Your friends might call you and say, hey, let's go fishing today. You, you, you're, there's choices you make every day. You might lose your job. You might, somebody you love might die, right? We don't, we don't get to know when we enter into this. Life unfolds to us like a drama. Also, uh, it has settings, it has uh, good guys and bad guys, all kinds of characters. Uh, a year goes by like a chapter in a novel. And sometimes it seems like a tragedy and sometimes it seems like a comedy. And most of the time it seems like a soap opera. <laughs> and I, that's really was really, yesterday it really kind of uh, came to me. And, and you know, but whatever happens, uh, it's, it's a story through and through. I'm gonna bring this together. So to stories are important. So I'm gonna give you one, another example. You, you come home in that one night, because I have three daughters, so I, I kind of, this didn't happen. But, uh, you, you come home one night and you find out that your car has been totaled, right? Now, all you know is that you loaned it to your, for a couple of hours to your daughter. Um, it is completely wrecked. The first thing that comes out of your mouth is, what happened? In other words, what's the story? Somebody, somebody has something splitting to. That's what they would say in my house. Um, and that can only be done by hearing what? The rest of the story. Life is about story. So be careful. Don't jump into any wrong conclusion. We don't know the story. Right? There's always another side to the story. You've heard that one before, right? Doesn't it? Right? Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it make a difference to know that she wasn't speeding and that in fact the car, the other car ran a red light? Now that changes the story, doesn't it? Um, and it changes the way you feel about the whole thing. Thank God she's all right. <laughs> that car didn't matter anymore. So stories have are how we connect with people. Here's how we tie it together. And leadership is about connecting with people. That simple. The relationship currency, as I like to call it, of a leader is directly proportionate to their storytelling ability. Uh, you don't have to be articulate, you don't have to be this well-spoken person, it's just life. This is how you connect with people and they connect with you. This is how people begin to believe in you as the leader. No one is captivated by a person that they do not believe in. No one will follow a person that they don't believe in. No one will trust a person they don't believe in. And there's the next word, trust. Be genuine, be real, trust. Um, you can't lead if no one follows you, right? So a big part of this, and we've heard this in many other places, self-awareness. You have to know who you are. It's not about, it's, a, it's, it's how your impact on other people are. You know? um, some of the greatest leaders are the greatest storytellers. You know? and, and I could sit here all day and cite a bunch of people, but to mine, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Ronald Reagan, uh, I mean, all kinds of people. These people, whether they are evil or not, they're storytellers. People followed them and bought into their great ideas or their lunacy. You know? uh, but, many, but here's the thing, many leaders are Leaders are afraid of telling of telling stories. They're afraid of using imagination because they think that people will laugh at them, so uh, and say and they feel like uh, they're talking rubbish or or just nothing and they don't make any sense. So I want to tie that into the let people feel the weight of who you are and let them let 
with them, um, deal with it. You know, so it, it's it's a, it's it's a, it's an interesting dynamic because we, we come back to mindset. What's when you focus and think about it this way, I think your actions start aligning with with being a leader. Plus, obviously, this is this is the final meeting. You've been hearing all this in many ways, shape, or form over a year. Or so. I always say I like to finish a sentence with an exclamation mark instead of a period. So thank you for adding, make, being part of the exclamation mark. If it's a stick or a little dot, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, if there's one way that gets in the way of using your imagination, it is fear and ridicule. Uh, if you want to lead, you have to figure out a way to change that mindset. Uh, if a leader feels that they have a good enough relationship with their team, they will be happier to go out on, on a limb for that. So the next time that you hear someone fantasizing about the future, whether they're a leader or not, I ask you to suspend your disbelief and give their story a chance. Who knows, it might someday be, become true. Okay, so there's my first chapter of my, my talk. It's about you know storytelling. And I felt that that was a really in insightful thing because that's kind of how I am as a person. But I started looking and paying attention to other people and they're just good storytellers. So I'm going to shift now uh, to what I really wanted to talk to you about because <laughs> we are going to talk about imagination. Uh, imagination. Uh, in a disruptive world, especially these days, right? We need leaders, right? Yeah, we need leaders with more imagination. We all have the capacity for imagination. Like I said before, we have it in us. I had, did a talk uh, a few months or a few weeks ago or a month and a half ago or something for the chamber for the young professionals and I talked about creativity. And you know, I, just, I say all the time, cre everybody's creative. You know, I consider myself a right brainer. You know, you hear it's right side of the brain, left side of the brain. But I, let me, last time I saw everybody has two sides to the brain. <laughs> This one's not dormant and this one is alive. It's just we lean towards one or the other, but it's still there. So you have the capability of being creative. And but I'm gonna explain in a few minutes the differences between creativity and imagination. There's there's really I, I, I definite line of demarcation between both of those. And then after I do that, then I'll shift to imagination. Um, so imagination is about seeing the impossible or the unreal. Imagination is about seeing what others do not see. For example, the Wright brothers were able to imagine a machine that would lift off the ground and fly through the air. So I think we understand that the imagination part. So creativity is using the imagination to unleash the potential of existing ideas in order to create new ones. They are basically connecting the dots between things we already know. Uh, the Wright brothers used their knowledge of bicycles and combined that knowledge with other concepts to get the first airplane off the ground. Now that's very creative. See the difference, right? Uh, you need both, but they're different. Um, okay, so the, 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 the meat of the talk today is uh, came up with a few principles of leading with imagination. So I have seven. So uh, I like to give you the numbers so you're like, wow, he said 32. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, okay, principle number one. Um, this is actually stuff that is, is, is for me, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to share these with you, and I'm going to ask you to just chew on the meat and spit out the bone. You know, if there's, put it in context with your life and your personality and who you are. So it's a, this is not fixed in law, okay? Principle number one, embrace relationships and, and love in all your interactions. Be open to that. So love is the foundation. You know, I'm not gonna go deep in there because I could live there forever, but the soil and the fuel of your free imagination is love. Love is both powerful and, uh, is power and powerful. So an act like service or a business endeavor done in love universally turns out better. I mean, this is like karma stuff, sowing and reaping. I mean, this is not new, but it, the key here is being genuine. Love is genuine. Love is not fake. If you're saying, oh, I'm going to love somebody, well, but it is an act. So you have to apply that. We as humans are relational people. We don't live in silos and little islands by ourselves. We're wilt, right? 
So if you're gonna have to be dealing with people, a leader it has to connect with people. And how do you lead? You have to set that example. So love is <coughs> the foundation of any uh, the foundation of any healthy relationship in, in personal life and in business. So be friendly, engage, be interested, don't prejudge, interact, and uh, don't be a silo. Uh, so get out there. Uh, um, but there's a little caveat to the to, to love. It's hard. It's a, it, you know, and you have to work at it. It is much easier to give in to fear and cynicism and self-interest to lead, to live, and to serve with love. You guys have a choice of which way you want to maneuver in this, because we all have choices. So be careful which to choose, because if you want to be that leader or if you want to step into that, um, love has to be part of the equation, part of the formula. Uh, this isn't something you can fake, like I said. So leadership, loving, uh, loving and relationships, but leadership, love and relationships are symbiotic, they're, they go together, they can't live out each other. So that's number one. That was basically embracing relationships and love in all, in, in all interactions. The next one I've actually talked about a few, a few times and it's authenticity and humility. And, um, a high hurdle that I that might present after you commit to the first one, to love, when leaning into the authenticity, it, it's leaning to, um, is your ego. And that's one thing that we have to kind of when I said become fit, self-aware, is understand we all have ego. We all have things in our personality that attract people and that repel people. But if you don't know what they are, you know, I, uh, I had a teacher, I, I went to Delaware State, and he, uh, my speech teacher, I used to say, um, nothing wrong in being ignorant, it's just staying that way, right? If, not, if you know, you know, and then once you know, then you're just not being ignorant, you're being an idiot. <laughs> that was my answer. Right? <laughs> so, our egos must be managed. There's, there is a, not a simple formula for this, and, and how you, and you, how you conquer this hurdle. But awareness and being in there and, and working on that is a big deal. And the world works in progress. We never arrive at now. I'm a leader. Now I'm done. No, the whole process is it's an ongoing process in your life to just continue to to, to grow. The struggle. It's actually not in the physical, it's in the heart. It's a heart condition. So again, if you're not, if you don't mean it, if you don't like people, I don't know if you're gonna be a leader. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I don't like people. You know, I've, I mean, even said that myself, like even during the COVID stuff, I'm like, oh, humanity, I'm just really, really upset. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I kind of shift it. Uh, it. It is difficult, I, I, you know, every time I get into those funds, there's somebody in my life who just goes, Maybe this is the number I'll add here. Have somebody in the life that can go. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? We need that in love. Like somebody kicks you, you know, oh, okay. Uh, I'm going off, off script, but this is, a, uh, this is one I just realized. You know, uh, I've kept a metaphor. You go I-95, you're going south, you're going 75 miles an hour, and then you're like, da -da. Da -da. Da -da. <laughs> the rumble strips, right? <laughs> We need a person that can be the rumble strip in our lives. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rumble strip, right? Because you kind of you get, you, we get into that point. We got blind spots, and somebody that we respect and love that uh, we give permission to should kind of step in there. That was my two A, I guess. I <laughs> <laughs> so authenticity and humility built. They build trust. And I talked about trust earlier, right? Uh, be real, be humble. Posers are not leaders. Posing is, you know, at some point the pose gets exposed. The danger with people is that the posers that get away with it too long. But at some point they get exposed. So there's a slogan, exposed posers. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> right? A teacher, right? Exposed to posers. Um, one more caveat here. I am, um, so it's okay to make mistakes, basically. It's a, I, I'm trying to read my own, if I type this, I just have to sleep. Um, <laughs> okay, so making mistakes and in humility saying sorry and asking for forgiveness and admitting that sometimes I just don't know. This is a place that, that does, that's part of humility and, and you're not gonna be perfect. So whenever you mess up, I literally apologize to my 11 year old last weekend. 
I, I snapped at her, we were moving, and I moved, we bought a house, and I just, and I immediately, she went upstairs. She wasn't crying, but I could tell she was affected, and then I, my, my heart broke, and then, you know, I could have jumped into the, I'm the dad, and, you know, my way or the highway, but I went up there, and I got on my knees, and I said to her, forgive me, I'm sorry, and, you know, and then connected, and, 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 and so that's being aware of that impact on people, your, your people, your teammates, your people that you're with, whether you're at work, in your office, if you're a business owner, However that is, that's a huge part of leadership. Um, and this is the place where you want to trust some people, and, uh, and then you get the privilege to lead as a servant. And you'll hear that term, servant leader, right? You serve. Um, it's a big deal. Okay, so number three, uh, creating an environment that matters. And I'm going to shift that to culture. We talked about building culture. In a, in a, in a, you know, CDCC's chamber, Judy, has built a culture in that, in that organization that regardless if it's in there or not, it's the same and it's fantastic, it's the contagious, right? It's a big, it, you know, the, you can't fake that. And it takes time to do that. I talked to Abby and Kelly all the time, we're a small company, it's three of us, and we, and we have, have big plans and stuff, but if we don't start here with the three of us, it's not good, it's very hard to implement that when there's 15, 20 of us, because it has to start from the, from the ground up. Um, a leader's primary job is to set the stage, not to perform in the stage. Um, if you want to lead with imagination, you must unleash the power, capacity, and energy of many, of the many, and release the stranglehold of the few. Okay, even if the few include you. So I, I was thinking about this last night, and I'm like, you know, you have to get away uh, uh, from yourself. You have to. And by the way, you know, I just realized I could, what I can do is I can get everybody's emails addresses and I can always, I can send you this word file or everything I tell you after this. So if you want to pull anything from there, you know, as a reference, you know, please, obviously I'm a, I'm a note taker. I told my daughter, actually, not the same daughter, you know, the other ones, you know, leaders are readers and leaders are note takers. And I always say that to my girls. And it's a matter of your memory. Don't ever trust your mind. You see that, that waiter, that, oh yeah, you are getting the, 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 the chick fil you know, the, the, the ch chilet mignon, and you get in the side of this and this, and then there's like 12 of them through, and then like, how do you memorize? That's fine, at some point, that's, that's not gonna, that person's brain matter is not gonna unfold that. So as a leader, taking notes is a good thing. Just, <laughs> up there. <laughs> the problem is, is my, my I won't go too much on a tangent, my wife has always been the memory, you know, us, and then she's kinda getting like me, and I'm like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's exactly right. They're, they're everywhere, everywhere. And then I think this is when my my, my youngest, my eleven year old, she's gonna step in and totally take advantage of like, Oh yeah, I told you this last week. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, okay, I guess you did. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can't wait to be here. Oh okay. <laughs> uh, we often use the term creating culture, however. Uh, but we don't think enough about those what those words mean. And this is work, and this is hard work. It involves careful thought and consideration of every decision we make as another brush stroke applies to the paint. So this is like, you know, so it, it's, it's, a, it's layers of when you build relationships, right? Either um, you're either moving towards a goal or you're moving away from it and when, you, when you're building your relationships. So being a leader is always being cognizant of your relationships. Every single person, because every person is different. Every personality is different. The way I, I deal with one person, even even with your kids, if you have kids, more than one, they're, they're different personalities, you know? I'm like, you came out of the loins of the same woman. I don't understand why you're so different. <laughs> I don't understand who, I don't understand you. <laughs> I don't understand. You got three girls. Three girls. Right? Um, that's it, right there. Three girls. <laughs> A lot of estrogen in my house. Chocolate, also. And <laughs> and five cats. Okay. Five. Oh oh, oh, I am weak. I just I will profess right now. <laughs> self aware. Self aware. Self aware. Hey. Self aware. Okay, <laughs> right, number four. Uh, uh, practicing vulnerability and right risk taking. I kind of combine those because I have kind of like a little bit too, but it's short. So there's a difference between calculated risk and careless risk. I always talk about risk. You gotta be a risk taker. That's the definition of entrepreneur, right? Whether you're a self-employed entrepreneur or you're doing a side hustle or you just have that entrepreneurial spirit, you're a risk taker. But there's a difference between 
diving without, you know, it, it, what's the term? Well, you know, like rushing the fields without a plan. You know, you, you fight valiantly, but you die quickly. You're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> or, okay, well, let me see where my enemy is. Let's see where this is. Let me do a little strategy. You get the high ground. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Star Wars fans? You're welcome. <laughs> um, it is an act of will, and you step into a place of being vulnerable, risking disappointment, failure, and betrayal. If you want, you, when you trust, you put yourself in a position of being let down, being betrayed, being. Uh, and I'd rather be in that space than be disappointed, because you learn from that. I don't want it to happen. I've been betrayed many times. What's the alternative? <clears throat> Getting a hard heart and closing yourself out and just not being relational? I, I don't think that's going to work long term. I think that person, that person is not a nice person or it's going to wilt and die. Um, the thing about vulnerability is about putting yourself in harm's uh, potential way or out there in order to accomplish something. This is true leadership. It requires clear, creative action. It takes action. It exposes you in a place of exposure. We, and, and so. But I, I think this is a sweet spot. But many people are scared to even step in there. I mean, I'm not talking about a dating somebody. I mean, you can apply some of this there. I'm talking about in, in business and yeah. work and stuff like that. But I mean, I guess you could apply it. Well, I need to be, you know, find my, you know, my sensitive part of me and you know, connect with people. And I, that's part of it. That's part of it. Uh, I've been married uh, for 25 years to the same person. And. <laughs> <laughs> so we're clear. <laughs> so I'm not judging. I'm not judging. My, my, my dad married five times. My, dad, my, my mom was the first marriage. My dad married five times. He's passed about three years ago. My sister is this little uh, four foot nine Puerto Rican, like firecracker. Oh my God, her energy is what this, this lady has. And she said, I remember last time I saw my dad, and he was, oh, I'm going to get married. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, Dad, do you think maybe it's me? <laughs> <laughs> he marries for sport. Right? <laughs> it's a hobby. Yeah. Right, right. Well, he was a risk taker. He was a risk taker. <laughs> he put himself out there. So he <laughs> See, there you go. I love it. There's some great takeaways out of this one. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna jump to number five, tolerating curiosity. Being curious starts with questions. Ask questions, a lot of questions. I ask how many questions people get. I, I, I over communicate, over communicate. You know, you hear the term, your left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. That is not a good thing. When you have an organization, you over communicate. You talk to your people, you make sure. It's, there's a difference between a hover, like a helicopter boss, you know, that has helicopter parents. Oh, yeah. that, those people that micromanage. I'm not talking about micromanaging. I'm talking about engaging with your team. But when you build that culture and you have trust, communication flows very, very, very easily from that. So all this stuff, I can, actually, you can see it as building blocks. You know, you do number one, and you get that one. You kind of, and when you start getting that momentum, then then you're really in a good place. Uh, it is being curious about customers, about stakeholders, uh, and then the other one is uh, uh, applying empathy. And empathy is an interesting thing because empathy. It's very lax, very much in business and in the world these days. And I, you know, I'm not going to jump there, but you have to kind of, it's an act of will, but if you are genuine and you, you care about people, even the annoying ones, mm. I'm sure I'm in that category sometimes. But, you know, there's still a space you can find common ground with people. Because you, when you lead a, a, an organization or you have a team, there's going to be all kinds of personalities. And they're not robots. We're people, right? Remember, the, we talk about stories and looking into that. What happens, you know, they come in, they have a long face, they're kind of pounding around. You don't know what happened to them that morning. You need to tell that story, right? But if you don't, if you don't have to build a, 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 a culture, how can, you, how can you provide context to the way they're acting? It's not just science. Maybe, you know, if I could be, they just had a bad morning. Yeah, we have to produce. Yes, we have to hit the, the, the margins. Yes, we have to get revenue. Yes, 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 yes. I get it. But you're people. That's leadership. And um, it's not just something that you talk. 
No, you just you're just living in, and you have to. You have to. But the, it's, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, sure, sure. And the thing is, you, those types of people are maybe are a little bit behind, but that doesn't mean they're disqualified. But the, the key is to understand where you are. I had I had many excuses personally of choosing a different path. My mom divorced my dad when I was three years old, raised me in another country than my sister. We moved here when I was 10 years old. I didn't know any English. I could have said, well, I didn't have a dad in my life, and I have every excuse to be a tyrant. Or, or you're smart. No, I do look at my mom, and my mom like really, really like brought that on camera. I, mean, I remember in college, I was, I was on a baseball scholarship here at Delaware State, and I lived I never got into trouble because I lived in fear of my mom kicking my, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. That's leadership there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my kids, and I'm not going to obviously get into the parental thing about thanking that, but I never, I actually never had to. My, I look at one of my girls, and that disappointment is enough to deter it. No, and you know, every kid has personalities, but, you, but the, my point here, and I'm going to bring it back to center here, is we're people. And awareness of you and awareness of them is a key part of leadership. So, number six, I think you're going to laugh because humor. There's nothing wrong with humor, right? So, it, you know, it, it's a lot easier. I thought about, gosh, you know, what am I going to talk about for an hour? Here we are 45 minutes later. I'm like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> So there's nothing wrong with people. <laughs> people remember stuff. You know, if you're not, well, I'm not funny. Well, I disagree. <laughs> it's just you're scared to put yourself out there and be disappointed. Let people feel the, you know, the weight of who you are and let people deal with it. So you see, there, this all ties together. Where do you start? It doesn't matter. Start. Um, laughter creates a runway for love to land on. Hey. I don't know. I, I, I typed that last night. I can't tell you. I, I, I probably heard it somewhere. I read a lot of books. But I was like, well, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the smart. Little, laughter creates a runway for love to land on and then take off again. Mm -hmm. Life is serious, to be sure, right? But organizations are serious, too. But they are made up of humans. Too many people take themselves too seriously. And I always say that. People take themselves too seriously. Oh, you know, it's like, oh, the executive or <laughs> Come on, man. I wish look the lady the, the, the people right now it's all ladies still old ladies ever see this here yeah that's okay that's okay that's okay we've had that talk before it's okay <laughs> there's been guys in there yes <laughs> but they're the most professional people you'll ever meet but they're the most outgoing and the funniest group you can be both so it's just don't be afraid of that um have fun, laugh, enjoy. Uh, humor contributes a huge element to culture. Humor makes us human. It connects us. It binds us. It gives us energy and capacity to handle stress and challenge. Come on, let's laugh a little, right? <sighs> okay. Oh. Right. Instead of like, oh, you know, it lifts us up. If we believe people are the greatest organizational, um, if, if if we believe people are our greatest organizational capacity, then infusing humor humor into an enterprise, into a, into a business, into a group has a huge return on investment. How you do it? You, I don't know who you, you know, I don't know you, I, you have your own personality, you provide, you have to kind of figure that out as a leader. Humor is a major, is, is majorly undervalued as a creative and cultural force and it needs to be a category. Humor opens the pathway to breakthroughs and new insights. It opens up the mind, it opens up that right side of the brain that a lot of people think doesn't exist in their lives. When that opens up and those two sides are working and they're communicating, the logical and the creative, gosh, it's, it's really, really scary stuff that can happen, really good stuff. I personally, when I feel like I have to kind of regroup, because there's times where there's just the busyness of life that just pounds you and pounds, pounds on you and just like beating and stuff. You know, in our, in our, in what we do, Abby, Kylie and I, it's like, hey, let's be creative today. Because we, we have clients who we do, we, we help them with marketing and social media and video and all that branding and you know we got to be in a tighter ring but you can't just like hey flip the switch i'm gonna now you know so <laughs> you know so but for me every so often my tank is empty that way for me personally nature is a way where i get myself replenished and i have places i go 
Uh, I started to do that recently again. After a little while, I got caught up in doing that. It could be anything for you. It could be your backyard. It could be a drive in the car. It could be whatever. Just don't go to the bottle or to booze and stuff. I mean, find a place of love. Of, 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 uh, of, um, yeah, I'm sorry, was that inappropriate? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just find a, I, I, I think about solitude, a place of solitude where I can clear my head, whatever that is that works for you. For me, I like to, even though I'm from, from the islands and stuff, I like the woods. I, at the beach, I'm like, that's oh, sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, but, but the, I like to go on a trail and just walk into the woods deep where I don't hear cars and then just sit. And I have a notebook and I just sit and let just clear my head. And that's where I, 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 I refill my, my creative. I do that, uh, I used to do that very often, but I'm now putting it on my calendar to make sure that I disconnect. Because then when I kind of, I just thought of that. Do you guys ever see the movie uh, with Billy Crystal um, when they went to the, um, there's a few folks my age or close to it. Um, they went out to a retreat and they came back. City Slickers? City Slickers, yeah. City Slickers. I was like, remember those people? City Slickers, you do? You don't have to. There's actually a sequel. There's actually a sequel, right? What are you doing? City Slickers. I heard that. Oh. It was for Dad. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. saying do that, go to a cattle ranch in the Midwest, but Why when they came sense? back, they were different. They were refreshed, renewed, replenished, and we have to be aware not only of how our impact on people, but also our physical capabilities, our mental capabilities, our emotional capabilities. <laughs> That's part of being a leader. I'm very aware these days, especially this last weekend when I helped us move. I, um, I had, I had a, a fr um, we were had movers coming last Friday, our closing day moved to the end of the day, so I had to cancel them. So I had to hustle and find people to help me move because we had to be out of the old house by Monday. So I'm like, oh, great. So now you know who your real friends are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you, oh, I know, I'm doing something today. And then you see them, oh, you see them hanging out in their backyard and, and Facebook. I'm like, no, I'm going around. But we had seven show up, and, but a few of those were like high school seniors and juniors, and these young bucks were like, oh. And I'm like, hey, my mind remembers that, and I'm like, look, I, I don't know. Look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Everything. Like that, that, like that, right? But I now know my physical capabilities. Trying to keep up. So mentally, emotionally, it's another thing. We know where, where you know, what, what kind of triggers you and different things, and understanding that, and then you can maneuver around people in other situations, and that's key. Self-awareness, right? Um, so the last one here is connecting the dots, putting it together, doing whatever it takes. So leadership is hard work, leading it with an imagination, it, and leading for results requires skill and competence, Com and constant, constant self-evaluation. You're always adjusting your sails, like a, like a sailor, right? The winds changes, you gotta sh shift. This is not always gonna be a straight path, and understand that it's not a straight line. The path to wherever your head is, is, is kind of moves around. So you have to be adjust, adjusting and be flexible uh, and course correcting. You have a servant's heart and a restlessness to get it mostly right. You're not going to be perfect. So, you know, there's, there's a, I, I, historically, most of my life I was, had paralysis by analysis. I always had my to-dos and I had notes <coughs> and I things and I had to make sure everything was, in the last two, three years I've shifted there. I've actually, my partner in high ground used to be my boss, and um, he has this, uh, uh, he's helped me with that part of my mentality, and it, it really rubbed on me right, and, and, adjust, and I, 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 it identified some issues that I had in business that were help hurting my leadership skills. So, he never said, Jake, you're doing this, I just became very aware. Um, so it is about asking the important, difficult questions of yourself and, and of your organization and waiting for the answers. It's about building trust. When there's trust within our organization, there it is, right? I think you guys have built trust. I think, you know, having, um, 
you guys were together and, and shared something that that you, nobody can ever take away from you the last year. You know, and that's really powerful because even though you guys are going to go your separate ways, there's always going to be that connection you have, right? And the nice thing is you won't be mad at the other ones because they didn't boot you out. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> we're really still here, right? So, <laughs> okay, I'll let, I'll, I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> By the way, I did I did apply for Survivor. Yes. Yeah, a few weeks ago. Uh, no, a few months ago. I did. You know, so if I disappear for two months, then you might see me on TV. Um, so it's about engaging and encouraging what is working and owning and dealing with what is not. Own it. You hear that all the time. You gotta own it. You take responsibility. Is the term in my generation. Own it. You know, I think a lot of people will receive forgiveness a lot faster. Or if if you just say I messed up, sorry. But most people just get, you know kind of get up and just don't 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 own it. That's a big part of leadership. Is owning it. It is about continuously and consistently uh, imagining the vision and communicating that vision and taking daily action towards that vision, okay? So I'm gonna end with a few lyrics. I'm not gonna sing, I'm just gonna recite something. Mm -hmm. God did not give me that ability to sing. <laughs> Dina has that ability. <laughs> so maybe you can sing with that. Uh, okay. <laughs> the first song is from Disney, but it's not, it's just a verse. It's not a Disney movie. It's actually, have you ever been to Disney World, anyone? <laughs> Epcot, Epcot had a, a journey to imagination, and there was a little character called Figment, and mm -hmm. was, the name of the song is called Spark. One Little Spark. One Little Spark. Sing it. Right. No, 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 no. No, uh, a dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So it's, it goes like this. Imagination, imagination. A dream can be a dream come true with just a spark from me and you. A little spark of inspiration is at the heart of all creation. Right at the start of everything that's new, one little spark lights up for you. Imagination. Now the next one is a song from Willy Wonka, the Gene Wilder version, and I put Johnny Depp there. <laughs> the good one. Uh, there, there, there is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. He was singing this when he went into the chocolate room. Uh, living there, you'll be free if you truly wish to be. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to, do it. Want to change the world? There's nothing to it. Imagination. Use it, act, do, inspire, learn, adapt, adjust, pivot, pivot, uh, navigate, have courage. Have courage, be courageous. It takes, it takes, you know, courage to do that. You can find any adjective in it. Um, so without, and I'll close here, without imagination, you can likely manage for a little time, but you can't lead. There's a difference between managing and leading, remember? Leadership, meaningful engagement of people being at their best and doing their best work requires mind, body, and spirit, and you're not going to get those without something born of imagination. Do not neglect your imagination because it'll hamper your creativity and ultimately prevent you from being the leader
then, then, the, then the text and then this. And all that noise just hampers that clear mindedness for imagination. So I have to purposely, as an act of will, separate myself to kind of think through things when I try to solve a problem that is in front of me. But when I when a problem comes to me, immediately I'm like, you know, kind of like in the movie Apollo 13, let's work the problem. How do you get this thing, that circle, into this thing with all that? <laughs> that took creativity and imagination. So sometimes you're forced into making that thing, but I purposely jump in there. Most of, you know, when, when, you know, to Yeah, yeah. And I think the outcome, it's, and it's messy. I'm not gonna say this, it's also messy. Like, embrace the mess. There's another t-shirt. <laughs> you gotta jump in, you gotta just kind of get in there and understand it's frustrating. Uh, us creatives, us like being in that world, uh, Abby and Kylie can attest to this. There's times we work on a, on a design or something and it's just like, it's not coming together, it's not coming together, and there's a moment that you turn a corner and it happens. But you can't jump there unless you go through that mess. The, most people are just afraid to go through that mess. When you become comfortable with the chaos and embrace it a little bit, then I think that's when the, you allow imagination to jump in. Embrace the chaos. Is a whole line of shirts. Yeah, I'm, stealing, I'm stealing all of them. Okay. Okay. I said I like a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm full of it. I mean, full of that. <laughs> so, so hopefully that answers your question. I mean, we're the long-winded in my answers all the time. So I had to play them. We're <laughs> you sing Lisa? Start playing. One more turn. <laughs> Anybody else? question. I have never found the answer. I'm constantly working on that. Um, I think I'm going to just quickly talk about our team. So I, since I started High Ground, it was just me and I thought I need help. I need to bring people. I purposely kind of wanted to make sure I found people that I knew I could work with, right? So when you're in a hiring environment, obviously there's things obviously from a legal perspective you have to go through. But at the end of the day, many times you have, the, the key is to maybe bring in uh, if this isn't a job environment or a business, you bring people that you don't, you know, everybody lies in their interviews, so we can attest, so if you interview somebody, nobody's gonna, they're gonna give you the references, everybody's gonna say everything nice about them, so you can never know until you're in it, right? And you kind of work through, but, um, but the, to answer your question, it's a matter of, uh, uh, sometimes you're put into a group that you didn't choose the people, and almost most of the time it is, is uh, awareness of yourself and awareness of others. And I try to meet people and shake hands and look them in the eye and get to know them and learn about them and genuinely do that. You know, one person that I know is good like that and, and I'm noticing Dina is like that because I just met, you know, known you, haven't known you very long, but we're gonna be good friends and stuff. And Judy is a very good people person. Just, she knows a lot of people. Yes, your position is in that place, but you have a choice to go up to them or not. And you choose to go in that. You know, so that's what I do all the time when I when I get into situations like this, right? Uh, if there's time to do it, I want to connect with people. And I, I'm gonna leave some business cards. Um, if anybody wants to email me, this is not like a pitch for high ground. If you any, I would love to have lunch with you know somebody wants to have lunch, we can talk, have any questions, send me an email. Uh, you will not get an invoice. <laughs> <laughs> Are you paying for lunch? <laughs> 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 Sometimes you do because you just have to have that 10 minutes to gather yourself, gather your thought. And, you know, I have an open door policy at the chamber. Like my door is always, always open, you know. But I'll actually go and step in the hall and I'll say, hey, you guys, I'm going in for 10 minutes. I'll be back because I don't want anybody to think there's anything wrong. I don't want anybody to think anybody's about to get in trouble. And I'm also asking their permission to step out for a few minutes. You know, so I don't, I mean, that's how I do it. Because sometimes you just have to have that 10, 15 minutes to complete a task so that you can jump in again. Yeah, you can give something you don't have, right? So if we're not filling our cup, how can we give, right? So I always thought, you know, uh, 
I always say all the time, you can't withdraw if you don't deposit. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have some protection time too, yeah. because otherwise, you know, it's, if you're trying to do all these things with your leader, you're constantly giving of yourself. Because they're taking away from yeah, you. Yeah, and then you're staying really late yeah. because you've given all of yourself all day. Um, and I think a big piece of that too, it's something I still struggle with, I don't think you ever get it perfect, but empowering your team too, like let them make the decisions. Yes. When I'm, I'm kind of shut off, you make the decisions, empower your team, and then we can talk about it and then support their decisions too. And then empowering them to make the right decisions when you are closed off doing other things. Yeah, that's I a think good point. Really I important. like that. Thank you for saying that. That's really good. So hopefully that helps a little bit. You talked about feelings. I'll touch on that a little too. Obviously that's very something that's very important. Um, just empathy, compassion. Um, I, I'm not, I can't change somebody. I'm, that's not my... I, but I can facilitate, a, you know, if there's a situation that is unique and I, I don't do it in front of people, I don't call them out. I like to pull people aside, have a conversation face to face, try to see, work through it and, and, and work that way. Sometimes you have to part ways with people because it just doesn't work. But I have to make sure that I don't want to destroy somebody's dignity in the, in the process of trying to, you know, it's not about who's right, like this is not mine, but it's about what's right. What's right is actually, you know, respecting that person's feelings to, 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 to that point, to, a, to a, and then hopefully you can get to a common ground with that person. Any other questions? When I said, I want to own your stuff, not theirs. <laughs> you know, now if it impacts what we're doing, then we have we have conversations. And there's compassion, you know, apply compassion and empathy. So, again, it comes back to being real. You have to mean it. You have to actually care. If you don't, all this stuff is just exercises and bullet points in a, in a PowerPoint. It doesn't matter if you don't care. Or a poster for me. Just yes. <laughs> or a t-shirt. With all these t-shirt phrases, we were like, where are the little... <laughs> that everyone should run the pad, right? <laughs> I can go do this. <laughs> Ford was like the poster boy. You're right. Mark. <laughs> Anybody else? Exactly like, oh. Anything else? <laughs> Last question. Going once? Going twice? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.